Welcome to the party. It's been a while since I have done an episode on pajama party profits and still no one has shown up in their PJs, but if you send me a pair, we'll see what we can do. My body in your PJs. <laughs> Are you in your PJs today? And the bottom I am. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> the bottom. That is the point of this show. And actually, I'm in some, I might, I might be have something pajama like on uh, my lower half today, too. So <laughs> awesome. Yeah, all right. So someone first admitted it. I actually had uh, one of my uh, one of my interviewees stand up last time just to see, you know, what was going nope, on. I'm not. St- I'm not standing up. <laughs> <laughs> So this, uh, the point of our show is to really highlight people who have been able to go from uh, working in the corporate world, the typical nine to five, getting into that commute and simply switching that commute to working in another room in their own house or sometimes from their bed, which is actually what I did when I first started Pajama Party Profits, uh, working working from home and doing things from home. So today I am so honored and privileged to share with you someone who does something that's very close to my heart. As a parent, I actually started as a parenting coach, one of my first online businesses. Her name is Joanne Light, and she is going to enlighten us on what she does from home and how she helps people who need that instruction manual that doesn't come when you have a child. So please That's welcome true. Joanne Light. And if I had my buttons today, it would be like, woo! <laughs> <laughs> welcome Joanne. Well, thank Thanks you. for thank wearing you your for having me. I like going to parties. I haven't been to a party in so many months. I don't think I'd recognize a party if I saw one, you know? <laughs> it's been well, weird. this being uh, filmed in January of 2022, we um, we are all becoming familiar with the, the online version of the party. So That's we're true. doing as much light of it as we can. If you brought your snacks, go grab your snacks. Grab that bottle of wine if the kids aren't around and let's talk to Joanne. Joanne. Hi. Why did you decide to help parents out? Well, I didn't come from the corporate world, but I came from public education. I was in higher ed administration for 32 years. So I did a lot of counseling, advising, and then I oversaw people, um, the student services side of uh, the college so I did, I oversaw financial aid and counseling and student services and student life and um, recruiting. And it was fun. It was great. I loved the students more than I loved all my employees. <laughs> um, managing people gets messy. So when I stopped doing that, I decided that coaching was the next great step. And um, I have three adult children. So I've been through the ups and downs of parenting and felt that that was my niche. I just thought I had something to offer um, and had participated in parent groups when I was a parent that I found supportive because the most important thing, one of the most important things for parents to really, I think, learn is that asking for help is not a bad thing. It's not shameful. You shouldn't feel guilty. You shouldn't think you can do it all by yourself because it is it takes a community and sometimes just talking with other parents or with a coach or a therapist can really, really help you move along in your journey. And my goal is to transform parents' journeys, to make them happier and more confident parents and have more harmony at home. That, that is my goal. No yeah, more I yelling, right here. no harmony. more yelling. Yeah. No more yelling. Um, and really that, that feeling, that overall immersion of guilt. So you, you found, did you, did you find yourself really with people already before you even made a choice? Did Did I find find yourself one of those people where people would come and ask you questions? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Based on what they knew I was going through maybe with one of my kids. Sure. Yeah. And those In the parking lot, you know, school parking lots, I somehow attracted people who had, well, what do you think of this? And my kid is doing this, but what what might that mean? Um, uh, Parenting is is hard, Brenda. I think it's the hardest job you'll ever have. And you may have 10 jobs, but I think parenting, if you really think about it, is really the toughest. Um, 
So those stay at home moms out there, do not think that you're not doing, you're not working and you're not, when people say, what do you do? <laughs> Give them an earful. <laughs> right. You do so many things. You're, oh, you're, okay. you're a coach, you're a cook, you're a babysitter, you're, you know, you're an educator nowadays. You have to teach the kids as well. So right. it's tough. It's tough out there. And um, I have a big, my passion is to get parents to look in so that they can reach out to their kids. Connection is, is so, so important, but you have to be willing to work on yourself a little bit too. And I find that that sometimes is surprising. Parents come and say, you know, my, my, my daughter is doing A, B, C, D, what should I do about it? And you, you know, Brenda, you can answer that question. Well, maybe try this, or you could try this, but it's usually the tip of the iceberg that they're feeling stressed about. Um, and there's a whole mess of other stuff underneath, both in you and your child. I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, there's an adage that we talk about in the manifestation world, uh, my other channel, manifestation and marketing. And that's what, when you're in an airplane that's about to go down and you have a child next to you, they always tell you, put the mask over yourself first and then tend to your child. Right. Because if you're not coming from a place of wholeness in yourself. You and authenticity, you, you know, exactly. I said, from a place of wholeness and authenticity, you know, if you really... right. Yeah, I, I agree. So making sure that you're, you're checking in on yourself. There's another term that we call self-love. If you don't care for yourself, it's really yep. hard to care for someone else. Self-care and self-compassion. Absolutely. Right. Which mothers feel like, oh, that is self-indulgent, but it's not. You can't, and your kids will appreciate it. If they see you doing it, they they'll understand why and they'll do it for themselves I mean because I, I I I have a son who's in early 30s and taking care of himself is always last on the list and you you can't you can't go on like that and especially if you're a parent it's really it's really really tough um yeah you know you and model I model that behavior that said it was a question and I said if I asked you to list out all the things that you love Here's how you can really tell if you're if you're on the right path. How long would it take you to list yourself? It would take a while for me. Like, oh, people. how long would it take for you to list yourself on people that you love? And then um, when you're talking about self care, I sometimes get the strangest looks because one of my favorite things to give a brand new mom is a box of Calgon. <laughs> And, and, and because you, you need to just have that space and that time mm -hmm. for yourself, um, even if it's just a, a few minutes. Absolutely. So, Still good um, before we get to our game, what is probably the number one or, num you know, or, or the first three, what kind of questions do you get from parents? Um, I, uh, let's see, top questions. Um, I think they, they talk about feeling overwhelmed and stressed out and burnt out. Um, and how, what should they do about that? So I, I, I think it's really important for parents to, to do a number of things. Self-care certainly being a, a big one. I think they have to learn to let go, manage their expectations, figure out um, what it is that they're doing too much of or worrying about too much and taking control of what they can control and not having anxiety, trying to talk yourself out of the anxiety and the stress that you really have no control over. Like right now, none of us knows, um, you know, where this is going. It seems our, our world is very uncertain in terms of the pandemic. So lots of times I deal with just trying to get people to learn how to cope with burnout and with stress. And then if you figure out how to do self-regulate your emotions, uh, and then they might ask me how to do that. Well, you have to identify your emotions. You have to be willing to talk about them and feel them. Um, it's all about emotional intelligence because if you can um, come to that as a parent, 
your child is more apt to respond in like. Um, modeling is really, really important. And so parents sometimes will say, well, what do you mean? I say, well, just what are your values? What's important to you? And do you actually model that to your children? Or do you just, you do one thing and you tell them they should do something different? So it's really, I think, important to get in line with your own emotions and connect with your child. Um, I think it's particularly important for teens because we know that the teen brain is doing all kinds of crazy wild things uh, uh, during teenage and adolescent years. Um, and it's not all bad. It's really good stuff that's going on. Um, I think teens get a, a, a bad rap. You know, everyone's like, oh, teenagers, you know, they're impudent, they're rash, they're they're, they won't listen, they either get really quiet or they just go off and do these crazy things. But really there's a very, um, I believe Brenda, there's a really, there's that thoughtful, wanna do their best, wanna make you proud, um, caring side to, to most teens. It's just whether you can recruit that side, elicit that side and talk to it and make a connection with that side. Yeah. Um... Uh, I'm an educator too. And like I said, I started as a parenting coach and the thing about teenagers and it sounds like bad advice, but uh, I do have a book coming out. That's um, why you should treat your teenager like a toddler. And people think, wait, you don't, you don't mean that. Right. And I absolutely mean that because teenagers have the same things going on in their brains that toddlers do. They need you to set boundaries, like draw that line in the sand. You need to expect them to attempt to cross those boundaries. And the interesting is, thing is how you handle it once they do, because mm -hmm. if they don't have those boundaries, they don't feel safe. A toddler needs those rules or they don't feel safe. And when you don't feel safe, your whole world can become unglued. So yeah. having those boundaries and expecting them to cross them. I can't communicate toddlers. They have these temper tantrums because they don't have the words to communicate. Teenagers have all these new ideas and emotions and they can't, and, and it's very hard for them to communicate. And so that's where a lot of the headbutting comes from, comes from. Uh, with those parents. So absolutely. If you just, just look back to how do you handle a I feel, you know, that can go right into the teenage head. Now I'm going to share more about your business, but before we do, it's game time. <laughs> I, I warned you in advance <laughs> when you come onto the Pajama Party Profit Show, you are going to play a game. We went back a little bit. This is a new one for me. I've heard this one on the radio. I, and apparently for me too. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. It's all right. So the rule is I will ask you questions, which I don't even have pre-prepared. So uh -oh. you've got extra time that in case it, 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 the radio is a little bit more brutal. Okay. <laughs> Most of my guests win. I think it's a 95% ratio at us. So just, uh, I'll be your first. The one in pajamas <laughs> who doesn't win. <laughs> all right. So the rule is uh, you answer any other or in the negative without saying yes or no and you cannot say the same thing twice and we'll just go we'll go until I'm tired of it <laughs> are you ready I'm ready oh see I didn't even catch her on the first one uh, is this like uh, Simon says you know <laughs> <laughs> all right is the weather pretty good over there right now I see the sun shining I see the sun shining. Do you, do you, are you a sun, um, a sun worshiper? I'm very careful in the sun. <laughs> okay. And have you ever had sunburn? When I was very young, I had sunburn often. <laughs> okay. And, um, is it, um, is it cool enough that you need to wear a jacket outside? My jacket is very special to me, and I often wear two jackets. Oh, okay. You're just too good for me, Joanne. <laughs> we'll call you the winner. Woo! Woo! All right. <laughs> that can be, uh, I, I had a lot of fun with that. Thanks so much for playing along. Again, if you've got your snacks, you should be snacking along. Joanne, yes. how? Um, yes, now I can say yes, right, Brenda? Yes, now you can. 
<laughs> okay, so um, you are a parenting coach. You you found that uh, people were coming to you with these kinds of questions. It's a really good thing we talk about. Uh, oftentimes you need a niche. Niche can be people, places. It can be similar problems that, that you help right. with, with various people. And when you decided to become a parenting coach, um, coaching is an industry that is not currently regulated. It's not like, it's not like um, being a, a therapist where you are licensed and, and um, you have to follow a whole bunch of laws, which is why I didn't go into counseling. Um, as a coach, you don't have to have those, but there is a spread of wealth. There's a, a like very, a, there's a myriad of ways to get trained. Uh, how did you decide what you were going to do in that area? Well, I, I, once I decided to retire, I, I decided I needed certification, even though I felt like I had so much experience over 30 years um, in education because I taught high school before I went into the, to the community college. Um, I, I got a certification from a place called the Life Purpose Institute. Um, it, was, it was great. I, I enjoyed it. I did a fast and furious kind of thing in, in like two weeks all day long every day. Um, and traveled for it. So that was kind of fun. And I felt that the certification was adequate. I also have gotten certified um, a practitioner certification in emotional intelligence, which I feel really strongly about. So that's the training that I've had other than my master's, my doctorate, <laughs> my bachelor's right. degree. And then were you able to, well, I know legally you were able to um, help parents even mm -hmm. though you weren't you didn't finish because we're talking to people here who are just contemplating you know what what do I do to to work from home you were still able to even though these were your things did you stop and wait to start your business before you had you know until you had your certification yes yes you did. I did I did yeah. mm -hmm. and even though legally you didn't you didn't have to okay. right and then do you have, um, how is it that, because uh, this is also being displayed uh, on a parenting page and uh, what if someone is really interested in getting to know more about you and how, you know, possibly they might want to work with you? Um, I, I have a webpage, which is joannehlight.com. Um, from that page, they can sign up for my emails um, and, or they, I, I have a, uh, a URL that's um, a scheduling site, and I'm happy to give um, any mom or dad a free uh, 30 to 45 minute consultation so we can see if it's a good fit and if they want what I have to offer, if it's value for them, um, and I'd be a good resource. Uh, I certainly have can tell people to go straight to my scheduling page and skip all the other things. Um, there is a Get we will gift, that in you know. our show notes for you. Yeah. Say again. Well, all of those, uh, all of those links will be in our show notes at pajamaprofits.com. Okay. okay. Joanne's interview there. And then, yeah. what one piece of advice do you have for? Um, let's do two because we have time. Let's okay. go first with uh, what what piece of advice do you have for? the struggling parent who isn't quite sure they even have time to reach out to you for help? I think that time is a good excuse. Um, a lot of people say, I don't have time for this. Well, if you add up all the time you spend being frustrated or up at 4 a.m. in the morning worrying what if, what if, what if, um, I understand that time is a precious commodity. Um, but I think that you need to t take, it's like taking time and money to, to, to make yourself better. You wouldn't hesitate to go to the doctor if something was wrong with your heart or your neck or whatever, um, you take the time. Um, so uh, I, I'd say that people should consider how, it's how important, what is your value? How, how much do you want things at home to feel more peaceful and calm because you could spend a lot of time spinning your wheels and yelling and screaming, which is 
just not healthy for you or your child, whatever age he or she is, whether they're little or whether they're teens or even young adults, you can, you know, that their brains are still working until they're 25, they're not fully developed. So I would say time is just an excuse. Um, and I don't mean to shortchange or, or deny that parents today, especially with working from home and teaching from home, all those things are just like unbelievably overwhelming and they're stressful. And you must remember that stress is cumulative and it, it, it's not healthy. It's just not healthy to be stressed out 24 seven. So if you can talk to someone once in a while and get a little support or get some tips on how to go about managing that argument with your teen or how, how what's your parenting style and what would work better for you, how to model the behavior that will in, elicit resilience in your kids. I think that's worth some time. I just feel like it is. Yes, I, I find um, with anyone that we coach back and forth and time becomes an issue, we tend, we start prioritizing. What, what is your top priority here? I, I'm yeah. sorry, you, I missed you cut out. When you're coaching and time becomes... Yeah, we, we list out priorities. Ah. And then once you list out those priorities, the time, the time just doesn't become an issue because we have prioritized what is really important. So right, so I would, I would say that my top priority would be to um, listen really carefully to what that parent feels is his or her greatest challenge. And mm -hmm. I would start there. And hopefully it would work backwards into talking about their connections with their child. Um, what do they do to connect with their child? Because that- Right, we were, we were just talking about the time issue of like, it, if you really want something, but you don't have time. There's, there's a guru who once said, someone said to them, um, you know, I've always wanted to learn Portuguese. And they said, how long have you wanted to learn? Well, you know, around 10 years or so. Well, you must not want to learn Portuguese. Right. Because it, it's obviously not a priority to you if you haven't found the time to learn it in, right. in 10 years. So listing out your priorities, your real priorities, that tends to like shed a lot of the, the trauma that comes with thinking that you need something is just kind of really focusing on what you need. So we're going to pivot here because this is the Pajama Party Profit Show. And we're talking to people who are thinking about starting their own business, not necessarily a parenting business, but um, any business that they can run from home. Sometimes it's just, you know, hard to get yourself out there. And that's why I like to feature people like you who have businesses that um, are, are successful and, and go, go out there and help people. So what would be not necessarily uh, parents, but what would be the um, number one piece of advice that you would give to someone who is considering starting something new? Think an about trying to be an entrepreneur. I think that the one of the first, I think the first couple of things is, first of all, who who is your audience? What is your target audience? Whom are you trying to serve? I'm assuming that's the key word right there. Not right. just your audience, but who do you want to help? Not who has the money to substantiate your lifestyle, but who is it that you want to help? Right. Who are those people? And then to build a foundational uh, program for, for that audience and, you know, based on what their pain points are, really. What are people, whether it's a product that you offer, you know, a supplement or a service or, a, you know, a whatever advice, um, uh, hypnotherapy, you, you need to build a foundational program that's based and it's aligned with your audience and who your audience is. It's not, that's not very easy to do. It's, it's way harder than it sounds. Well, but, right, because a lot of people will build something and then realize there's no audience for it. But what you did, that's why I would kind of, you know, back to the beginning of the interview, you had people coming to you with questions. So when you pay attention, what are people coming to you to? What are they asking? You're right. What kind of advice do they need? That starts that, that process. And, and who is the favorite person that you loved helping or, or who gave you the most, you know, the, the biggest feedback? Oh my God, you're like, you're a godsend. Everybody's heard that at least once in their life. I know I love hearing that. Yeah. So when you hear that, who pay attention, who was it? What did, what were they asking you? What kind of things? 
and pay attention to, you know, Joanne, you're a little bit, um, you decided that you didn't want to, you know, pursue this until you had the certification, but don't let that stop you. Right. You can still provide uh, services and uh, really help people and be monetized for, for helping them. So I hope that we have helped someone uh, get one step further into uh, where they want to go and how they want to change the world and their life and get through this stuff that we can't say out loud. You said it once, don't say that again, because you two will stop me. (laughs) So, um, you, you know, get through whatever circumstances there are that are around you. Right now, we've got one circumstance, but guess what? When I started this show several years back, there was always a circumstance. There's always something, sure. My sure. circumstance was an illness that kept me at home. Um, other other people have other circumstances. There can be disabilities. There can be mm-hmm. lack of funding. But if you just sit in the how can I help others, something is going to manifest in front of you. And I, I think that's that true. That you will contact me so that you can come on this show too. <laughs> Remember to go to dramapartyprofits.com for the show notes where you can uh, reach out to Joanne. Tell her how awesome she was and that she won the game, of course. And uh, we will we will talk to you soon, maybe in pajamas. Right, right. <laughs>